Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we will be going again to the topic of traveling. And as with everything in this channel, I either talk about how to save money or invest it. Therefore, today it's time to talk about 8 ways to save money while traveling. To be fair, at the beginning I was not sure whether to make this video or not, but then looking at other videos done on the topic, I saw that many of the ideas given were very general and at least super obvious to me. Not only that, but in my opinion they also miss some important things that are worth considering if you are planning on saving money while traveling. But just to give you a bit of background on the topic, I have been traveling since I was a kid. In fact, my parents even first bought a camping car before actually buying a house and they were living in the camping car for a little while. So growing up with parents that love traveling, I have been super lucky and I have been to many different countries. Not only that, but being an average family in terms of income has taught me many different tricks on how to save money. Anyways, I don't want to extend more in the introduction, so let's jump right into the topic. The first thing to save money while traveling is to hit that like button. It is for free and it is the first step if you want to know 8 tricks in order to save money on. So that said, thank you very much. Okay, now the real first thing to know and to save money on traveling is the choice of the destination. If you really want to save money, it is not so much about the flights and many other things that also yes, but more importantly, the destination plays a very very important role in the cost of each trip. Because if you travel to a very expensive country, even if the flight to get there is very cheap, the cost that you will have at the destination will be very high. Instead, if you travel to cheaper countries, uh, just to mention some examples like Southeast of Asia or Africa, the cost of the flight to get to the destination might be a bit higher, but then the cost while you are at the destination is super low. And now let me show you screenshots of the cheapest accommodation that I could find, you know, searching on Google for the night from the 1st to the 2nd of August this 2020, comparing the countries Norway, which is an expensive country, versus Thailand that can be considered a cheaper country. In Norway, the cheapest places are campings and the cheapest one costed 26 euros per night, while looking at Thailand, the cheapest ones costed 5 euros a night only and it was in a hostel. This means that the cost of the destination is 5 times more expensive Norway compared to Thailand and this is something that I think is worth considering. And now I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to Norway to travel because if this is the place that you want to go to then go ahead and go there. But I'm just saying that when choosing the destination, maybe right now, especially if you're watching this video on tips to save money, either you don't have a lot of money or you are young, which probably you also don't have a lot of money, so maybe you can leave more expensive destinations for at a later point or stage in life in which you have more money available. The next one is of course related to transportation. In here I will focus mostly on flights but it could also be applied to other means of transportation. A very basic thing is to book flights in advance and forget about, I think there's a common popularity saying that you can get last minute deals on flights but to be fair this is almost unexistent and now I will explain you why. Imagine that you had an airline. What you want as a manager of an airline or whatever is to know as soon as possible how many passengers will you have or how much demand there will be for a plane for a specific date in order to be able to plan things ahead of time. If airlines now started in general uh, decreasing their prices as the flight date gets closer, so offering these so-called last minute deals, uh, people would, would stop uh, buying flights in advance and they would just wait for last minute deals. And this is of course not good for them, especially for what I said of planning and so on. So what they do is that they offer the cheapest rates the longer you book in advance. Moreover, usually if people book right now in short notice, like just a few days before taking the flight, it's because they have an urgent situation and they really don't care or they are willing to pay whatever price the flights cost uh, in order to travel to that place. So therefore, uh, companies can charge more and there will still be the, this demand of last minute changes and so on. Well, I hope this was clear. The next thing to do is to use the incognito window, so the private one, uh, in order to search for your flights. This way your search results don't appear in your search history and the cookies are disabled, which means that companies cannot track what you do. I personally always do this because if airlines usually see that I have looked at a specific flight and so on, if I look again at it, probably it will be more expensive only because they know that I had already looked at it 
and they want to create to me this sense of urgency and scarcity displaying a higher price in order for me to say wait I cannot wait any longer I need to book it now and then just kind of like booking it then again it doesn't have to be like that but I would advise you to do so in order to give less information to the airlines about your booking behavior when booking flights so if you use this incognito window, you can basically keep looking for flights, maybe throughout one week, two weeks, check the flights every day, see if there are any specific offers, which days maybe change and so on, and then once you see the opportunity or a date or a flight that suits you, then you can go ahead and book it. The next topic is accommodation. In here, besides booking in advance for the same logic that I just shared with you with the airlines, although I must say that the hotel industry is much more outdated and there are many more like, you know, smaller hotels that might not be applying so such good revenue management practices. So you can also find, I think, many more last minute deals. Uh, but anyways, I would advise you to book it in advance. But my advice in terms of accommodation is to use platforms such as Home Exchange, which allow you to basically sleep almost for free in the different destinations. And you can specially use this for countries that are much more expensive than the country that you live in. I really don't want to extend on that since I already made a video. I will leave it here above, but also down below in the description. So if you're interested in getting to know how Home Exchange works and so on, you will have it there. The next thing within accommodation is to look for countries to travel to that allow you to camp for free with your tent. There are countries such as for instance Norway that I just mentioned before, Sweden, Finland, uh, Iceland or Kyrgyzstan in which you can do this legally. And if you are able to sleep in a tent, you are basically reducing your cost of accommodation to zero or almost zero, just the cost of acquiring the tent. The next thing is to avoid going to restaurants. Of course, if you are traveling to the country because of gastronomic, to do gastronomic tourism, then this might be hard to avoid, but otherwise, I would never go to a restaurant. Instead, just buy the food in the local supermarket, cook it yourself, and you'll save a lot of money. And the best thing is that if you do this, there will be no real difference or almost no major difference between the money that you spend on food when you are at home versus the money that you spend while you're traveling. Next tip is regarding activities and the destination. And of course, this will depend a lot on the type of activities you like to do, because there, you know, I don't know, you can do more like nature, maybe you're more interested in cities, museums, and so on. But regardless of whether you do one of these things, please, please, please always check for discounts or offers online. In terms of museums and places like that, there are often days in which it is cheaper to go there and also there are usually offers for especially young people if you visit the museums and so on. So just make sure that you are well informed on that. Finally, with these extra activities and actually just anything you booked online in general, look for coupon codes. Seriously, it is as simple as typing coupon code and the name of the website or you know the product that you would like to buy and 80% of the times the coupon codes that you will find online uh, will not work. But the 20% of the times the coupon codes will actually work and you will be able to save maybe 5%, 10% of things that you would be buying anyways. So please, when you're traveling or booking things, just make sure that you check for the coupon codes. Well, that was it. These were my tips in order to save money while traveling. And I get it that it might not be for everyone since I consider myself to be pretty frugal. But again, in life, everything is a matter of priorities. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any suggestions or any extra tips uh, that I didn't mention or that you would like to add, just please make sure to leave them in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and see you next time.